Right under the TV? No, toward me, right behind the TV. All that, all the cableage under there, covered up. So many cables. That's the problem with the technology show. You're constantly trying to hide cables. Oh, yeah. Are we ready, guys? What technology do I take with me on the road? I take my notebook, computer, and a cell phone. And really, that's all I need. Because bottom line is I've got to speak or I've got to hear, which is arranging my meetings, or look at a document. I don't think we really have to load ourselves down with technology. I keep saying it. It's a tool. Dave Chalk Connected is brought to you by TELUS. The future is friendly. Because tra traveling can be stressful. You know, one thing I do, and it's real low tech, there's these natural jet lag pills you can take. I used to be, it used to be terrible when I travel across the country. Take a few of these little natural pills, and lo and behold, I'm perfectly fine when I get there. Are you ready to go? You know, you know? Yeah. How do you say that name again? Cosmio? 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 Oh, yeah, it is hibernating. It's a book to Shiba, so we can feel free. It's coming, it's coming. No, it's hibernating. Have a look at Sean's camera here. Can we get you guys in your starting position? Yeah, Mike, you're over there. Yes, in the corner. That's me in the corner. Now, how's this little runner thing? Is it kind of weird? From my angle, it is. Matches my shirt. <laughs> yeah. OK, ready, guys? And mark it. Three. Show nine, segment one dash seven, take three, mark it. And stand by. Three. Action. Well, the centerpiece of most road warriors' arsenals are their notebook computers. There are many different styles and designs and functionalities available today when you go out to select one, so there are some decisions to be made. In fact, phones today can give you slight functionality. PDAs give you moderate, depending on what you're looking for. A BlackBerry might be almost to the point. But how do you make that decision? Well, one of the points you want to replacing your desktop computer. We took a look at this one on a couple of shows back called the... Cosmio. Cosmio. I've had a lot of trouble with that name. We've got to talk to Toshiba about using more user-friendly names, but I just want to call it Dave. Dave, the connected. This notebook computer really was a desktop replacement. Large hard drives in it. Two, I believe. The one was a 40 inch. 16 by 9, 17 inch screen. Very significant battery power, good performance, and running the Windows Media Center, meaning full connectivity for recording television shows. So for home or office, right? But when you're on the road, do you need all that with you? This is a way to take a look at a lightweight operation. This one, the Portage, the R100 series, as you can see, very lightweight, very thin, coming in at just over two pounds. Possibly not all the performance and functionality, but certainly a powerful tool to take with you on the road, giving you a lot more function than, say, a PDA. This thing is smoking thin. You can see it's like a razor blade. Yeah, I mean, take a look at that. And even compare it right here to this one, you can see very <laughs> quickly what we're talking about but, but again for different applications yeah but it's got a lot of power in it. it's got a one gigahertz pentium m chip inside it's got 40 gig hard drive 256 megabytes of ram and built-in wireless so you can take it to any of the hot spots and we're talking mid two thousand dollar price range but as prices go they continue to go down but there is an option one of the things toshiba offers for about a two hundred dollar upgrade actually a little tent you had a mouse or something to crawl right underneath there. If you're looking for a slight upgrade in this, you can, for another $200, I believe, you can take it up. It gives you the G on the wireless, so taking it up nearly double or triple in the performance there, give you an extra 100 uh, megahertz of processing speed, and going from 256 to 512K of RAM. So, you know, a few little adjustments you can make. On the back, you can see connection ports are here. Um, you know, it's got PC card slot, uh, headphone controls, but what it doesn't have is a DVD or a CD drive. That could come in through a docking station. There's a little port on the bottom here that docks it in. But also, interestingly, the way to keep the weight down on this is by reducing the battery about two hours on a charge. But if you do need longer than that, there's an optional battery. I think this takes it up to about six hours worth. Six altogether. hours of time. But it snaps you know, right on the bottom. It, it's super thin and it's, it's still pretty thin. Yeah, and that would snap right onto the bottom. The same place the docking station. See how clever I am today. 
That was not clever enough, I think. But it is, it does go on there pretty easy. I can see what he's doing wrong because I got the better viewing angle here. Like that, it snaps see. right on. That's now, why the shell's named after you. Got to do it. One thing I really liked about this one, I took it home, that was when I didn't have the other battery on the bottom. It was so lightweight that when it was sitting on my lap and I was ty typing away, didn't really cause any frustration. The thing is so light. If you are looking to uh, have a device with you on the road, maybe not replacing your desktop, meaning it's not going to have all the performance, this is a great one to take a look at. Cost is reasonable, performance is good, and it is so easy you barely know you got it with you in your bag or backpack. Cut. Nice. Very fine, buddy. Is that a way to cut away? Okay. Yep. This um, said 256 versus 512K. Uh, Instead of uh, megabyte. Can we, do, can we edit megabyte in over K? Um, Just say megabyte. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, I don't know. I'm sure we can do it with a cutaway. Yeah, I, you know, I made one, I made one issue on that one. 256 megabytes is the RAM that comes with, and I said 256K, and the upgraded model has 512 megabytes, so there's a correction. We're already done. I fixed it. All right, done. <laughs> wow, the first business trip I ever took, it was actually when I used to sell shoes, and I had to go to the big shoe convention. <laughs> So I mean, it's so different than now. Like back then, no one had laptops or anything like that. It was just you get on the plane and you, you go to where you're at. There's no email. Uh, if you needed to do any communication, it was via hotel phone or pay phone. Didn't even have cell phones back then. So we're doing this puppy first, yeah. and then like, and it's called a Wi-Fi finder. Uh, are you okay with plugging this into the back of the USB? Is that going to be too tricky for you? Okay. Handcuffs. Yeah. That's why the show is named after Dave. <laughs> yeah. Wi-Fi or, or wireless internet, you know, the hot spots, that's been brilliant. I can get so much more done now because I always carry my laptop with me while I'm traveling. And typically most of the places I'm going, like if I'm in an airport or at the hotel and, you know, all these Starbucks along the way, no matter where I am, they've all got the hotspot so I can just kind of flip open my laptop and enter in my, my account and I'm, I'm surfing the internet and I'm getting my email. If you ask Mike why he likes working with me, it would be because I make him look good. You see, people like Mike that are so good looking, they need someone lesser beside them so they really glow and Mike knows he has that so it works. And mark it. Show nine, segment two dash six, alpha, take three, marker. Okay, so up to 200 feet on that. I'm going to pull this light out. You can just wrap it up and hold on. And remember LED, meaning it's not going to drain the battery. People might get confused. Well, imagine this, you're driving down the highway, thinking, oh my gosh, I forgot to send an email. Well, you've got your notebook computer with you, but where to find that internet connection? Well, there's millions of hotspots around now in airports, cafes, hotels. The trick is finding one. One way is to open up your notebook, wait for it to boot up, and then if you do have an internet connection or a wireless, uh, sorry, connection in your notebook computer, it can then detect. What about an easier way? This is something from Kensington. It's called their Wi-Fi Finder. It can actually detect hot spots up to 200 feet away. And the nice thing about that is it's right on the end of your keychain. You don't have to wait for your notebook computer to load up. And just by simply looking at the three LED lights here, it'll actually give you the signal strength as well. So now when you're on the road for just $40 on the end of your keychain, you can find those hot spots in a jiffy. You're, fine, you're using your notebook computer in a dark place. Maybe that hot spot or that cafe is a little dark or you're on an airplane at night. Why not have a look at this? This is from Dynex. It's a flexible USB LED light. It's pretty simple. All you do is you plug it into the back of your notebook computer on any USB connection, and it draws the power from your notebook battery. And being an LED light, it's super bright, and it's hardly any battery drain. And you can see now I can simply position it over my keyboard, and in any dark condition, I can see exactly what I'm typing. Good. All right. That's good. Let's set up the next station. 1 to 10. 109. Let's break for lunch. See? And it's art, too. 
How long does it last, Mike? Well, it is rated at over 8,000 hours. Perhaps I forgot to say that in the segment. Is that why you asked me? How many years is that, Mike? Boy, you know, if I had to do the math at the top of my head, around four years. Wow, that's 40 hours a week. Pretty good, eh? All right. I think that would last longer than the notebook computer. <laughs> and the haircut. And the haircut. <laughs> you know, if you do a lot of traveling and you take your notebook computer with you, there's something better you can do than always packing up your power adapter. There's some other options out there you may not be familiar with. This is something interesting here, a universal power adapter. You can see, much slimmer and lighter weight, a lot easier to pack. And interestingly enough, it works with most notebooks in the marketplace because this company gives you all sorts of adapters with it. You simply pop one of these onto the end and it'll plug right into your notebook. Now, many of these will plug into the wall, but as you see, this one even has a car adapter so you can use it right in your car and charge your notebook computer. Interestingly enough, you can even pull this end off. You know what that one is? That's the universal adapter for airlines. Many now give you power right in the seat, and this is how you can pick it up. That's one of the ways you can do it, but remember, too, that you can get power right out of your car. Now, your car's battery is direct current. Notebook computers, MP3 players, and CDs need alternating current. This is an inverter. Put this in your cigarette lighter, and you can see right on the side, you've got a regular power plug. You might even power your blow dryer if you're out on a camping trip, but don't drain the battery too much. Mike's a cool kind of guy. He is goofy, but he's also very professional. He runs a company. He's a, he's a president. He knows what he's doing, but Mike's got this little strange side to him. He loves irking people, and he loves banter, so he loves to get into conflict, and the way he creates conflict is be goofy, and somebody attacks him. He loves the whole thing. What, what goes in here? More? Your contacts, your uh, phone numbers, your addresses, your fax numbers. Your and uh, email addresses? And appointments? Uh, no. Okay, got it. And action. While most of us would say we couldn't live without our cellular phones because of the convenience, today's cellular phones are actually a lot more powerful than we're giving them credit for. Features of contact management, email addresses, all sorts of things that would be database related are capable of being stored in the phone. The only reason most of us don't tend to do it, it is way too much work to enter it in on the tiny keypad. And then if anything goes wrong on your 60 or 200 entries, that is a heck of a lot of work to put them. It's very frustrating. I tried it on the first couple phones and gave up. The point now is... Now you have no more friends. Right. And I, you know, I keep a couple of them in there, and it, when the phone number comes up, it pulls up the database and shows me who's calling, but I'd like it to happen with all of them. But most of us, using Microsoft Windows 2000 or XP, have our Outlook updated with all the contacts and email addresses and all the information we would ever want. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just sort of zap it from your computer over to your phone? Well, you can. There have been a number of you know, attempts at this in the past. A certain cable with a specific adapter could transfer it, but you know, if you change your phone, then the, the Yeah, cable and a lot of people, no I change works. my phone every year. Right. So I've got to buy a new cable. I've got to buy a new year. cable, and typically a new software goes along with that, and there's a fair expense to it. One of the types of networks out in the marketplace is GSM, very popular in Europe. Interesting thing about GSM phones, they use a SIM module. Now, the SIM in SIM card stands for Subscriber Identity Module, and all GSM phones have this. How do you have room in your brain for all of those? It's a special place. Simply pull this little tab forward right here and bring out the SIM card. They're all the same. What we're going to show you now is a reader that allows you to transfer, yes, all of your Outlook into your phone. It's called the Fomate. It's a SIM card data manager. It comes with the actual reader and a USB cable to hook it right into your laptop. And again, desktop. one cable doesn't matter if you change your phone because all the SIM cards are the same. You flip open the, uh, the lid here. About and $60 this. for the device and the software. Which is cool. So uh, you've got this here, so no matter how many phones you go right. through, that SIM card travels with you and you don't have to worry about it anymore. You load the software up and working in conjunction with your Outlook, it'll automatically read all of your Outlook contacts and their phone numbers. And it's super simple. You can see everything that's on your card here or your phone and simply drag or drop or transfer all of them, whatever you want. Hit the sync or the transfer button and you're good to go. All of those phone numbers, which take uh, little, you know, next to no time entering in with the keyboard, automatically go over. And this is great if you're a traveler as well, too, if you were traveling to another country or another location where you don't use all these phone numbers on a regular basis, you could transfer over a different oh, totally. database for that particular reason while you're traveling. Simply take the card out, put it back inside. I won't use it right now. I'll just pop it in like this even without it. 
power the phone back up, that phone now is fully equipped with all that information, all that contact information. And especially if you have one of the newer camera phones where you need email addresses as well, this is a great way to get them transferred over. If you really want to take full advantage of your cellular phone and load it up with everything you already have, try transferring it over on your SIM card. Cut. Good. It's good for time. All right, let's move to the next segment. I really like those SIM cards. Um, you can only hold do a quick like change. numbers on there, though, oh, aren't you? Yeah, but that, they can get yeah. 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 That's it for you today? That deal, they already went yes. low, but yes, by the next version. I'd like to stay in help find information. I'm going to go. The day. I think if you spend a lot of time traveling, you do need to pack light. I used to say, oh, the airlines never lose your luggage, and I had a year where it got lost three times, so I completely changed. You now, we've talked about Targus on the show a few times. They've got some bags that make it easy to pack some clothes and some technology, and that's what you want to do, because, you know, bottom line, when you're traveling, you want to get in, do the job, and get out. Yeah. Uh, or the other thing you did was the, the SIM card reader for right. uh, mobile phones for syncing yeah. with your Outlook. This, with your hand. Every once in a while, you have to kind of cheat a product, like hold it somewhere where you wouldn't naturally, so that the camera can actually see it. Later. You'd be surprised how many times you think it's in a natural hand movement, but really the person's holding it up here and pointing like that with the camera. You just gotta make sure this he's hard mirror is a real problem. Can we take it down? It's it's a pretty sizable thing that's on the name. Oh, so basically you get a bundle, you get video yeah, editing, digital yeah. editing. Yep. And yeah. even when Mike's talking on the screen here, mm -hmm. don't go in tight all the time. We can pick it up after. Yeah. I would rather Mike talk and have this shot available as, as opposed to wasting it just on a tight shot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So somehow we can correct it. Go 9, cycle 4 7, Baker, take 6, marker. Frame. Well, since the world went digital 10 or 12 years ago, many of us have been using notebook computers to take that digital information with us when we're on the road. Challenge? Notebook computers can be too big in some situations. In recent years, manufacturers have been putting more and more information into cell phones. Now, the cellular phone does seem like a logical place to start storing more and more digital information. However, there is one challenge today, and that is the processing power. Not enough raw processing power to deal with all the content we'd like to put on it. So, is there another option? Well, of course there is. Many people know about the PDA, or the Personal Digital Assistant. This is the Palm One Tungsten T5, their latest player into the marketplace, definitely the device to have if you're looking to take content with you. This one even supports an Intel processor at 416 megahertz, meaning it's almost as powerful as a desktop computer of recent times, 256 megabytes of RAM, and one interesting thing, in PDAs of past, if the battery went completely dead, you would lose your content. This is now non-volatile memory, meaning power goes down and doesn't lose the information. But that really is just the beginning because these have gone multimedia now. They're not just about your contact and data information. They're about your music, your pictures, and your video. Well, I like that. I think the two biggest complaints I had in the past were that you couldn't play things like video mm -hmm. and, and music. And it was just a pain to actually sync this up with your computer to get the information in. But just look now. I can uh, use all the simple controls by hitting the Documents button here and go down to my videos and see what I got. What better way to demonstrate than with a video of me? <laughs> but this is great because uh, I sell the TV show. We've got other TV shows for this company here. Now I can put all those videos on right. a Palm Pilot, and I don't have to carry a notebook computer around. And this is good for someone in sales or marketing. All the information, not just the contact information, can now go with you. And to get the stuff into the Palm Pilot, it's super easy. It's got the Palm desktop. You can see right up here, I can uh, sync up everything from my contact uh, information from Microsoft Outlook to things like pictures and videos. And it's kind of cool because you can even get a preview of what it's going to look like on the handheld before you send it down. Now, Mike showed the cable that connected it to the computer, but this also has Bluetooth built into it. it means you can directly connect through the air to your computer, transfer information around, or to another Bluetooth device. And you talked about that 256 megabytes of RAM. It now acts as a USB drive, so when you hook this cable in, it's like dragging and dropping onto it's another like drive. having an extra drive. And one other thing, many people have said in the past that uh, uh, documents from Microsoft uh, Word and Outlook are easier read on a Microsoft device. Palm has made it so easier with 
documents to go. And again, I can just go into my documents here, and I can even bring up things like a PowerPoint presentation and run them off my Very easy device. Look into it if you want to have all your information with you wherever you go. And oh, I forgot one thing. Darn Wi-Fi card again. This, one other option, about $600 for the PDA. $200 option here. Wi-Fi card pops into the top. Full connectivity to your home or to your office, to any hotspot when you're on the road. Ah, now, officially. I travel all the time, so that's one cool thing about technology. You can kind of bring some of the comforts with you. You know, with laptops now, they've got built-in DVD players, so I can watch the movies that I want to watch if I'm sitting on a plane. Plus, I've got my entire music collection on my laptop, too. So, again, I can listen to it wherever I'm going. And, you know, in the hotel room, I've got a little pair of speakers as well. I can listen to my favorite tunes. Dave Chalk Connected is brought to you by TELUS. The future is friendly. I think wireless communication was what the industry needed to really give it a jolt and let people understand how powerful technology was. It's as powerful as the electrical grid was when it was first created to standardize power in the home. We have now standardized the way technology communicates, whether it's a notebook computer, a PDA, or a cell phone. Everything can now talk to everything. This is hour 10 of a long day of shooting. Yeah. To tell you the truth, it's not that tiring. It's mentally draining because there's so much stuff going in out of my head. But like between each segment, I flush it out. I go sit down for a minute. I take a power rest for about 30 seconds, and then off I go again. So he's no average Joe. Like Tom, he's in the know. Yeah. Right. Television is a serious business. Yes. Mark, good.